Kohler, well-known, nationally syndicated, recognized CPA attorney. CPA and author Mark Kohler joins us. And Mark Kohler is a tax attorney and financial advisor. He joins us live now via Skype. Good morning. This is going to be the first year Americans file taxes under the new tax law. These changes could save you money or uh, cost you big time if you make a mistake. Mark Kohler is here with advice. Hi, guys. I wanted to welcome you again to Millionaire Brand Creation. I'm your host, Michael Banavac, and I'm super excited to have a friend of mine, Mark Kohler, on. Mark and I are actually Arizonians, and I didn't even know that. We both kind of live pretty close to one another. And you might know Mark for a myriad of different reasons. He's with KKOS Lawyers, a law firm that specializes in tax, legal, wealth, estate, and asset protection. He is also on the board of directors of a directed IRA trust company. He's the best-selling author of four books, a few of which are in front of him including the tax and legal playbook. And more importantly, he is also one of the hosts of two very popular podcasts, the Main Street Business Podcast and the Directed IRA Podcast. And I actually saw you, Mark, on Grant Cardone's Power Players Podcast. So thank you so much for taking the time and thank you for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, what an honor. And I, I hope I don't, he, Michael didn't turn any of you uh, off with the word tax and legal because people, this is the most exciting topic for small business owners because they're starving for this info. They just don't know where to go. So hopefully I can share something today that will set you free. <laughs> well, a lot of our audience, Mark, and we'll just dive into it because you said, let's just cut through the crap. Let's cut through the stories. Let's get to actionable nuggets. Our audience are entrepreneurs, real estate agents, people may be looking to reset their business career. You know, with high interest rates right now, a lot of people aren't as affluent as they once were, right? The banks are tightening. What are some of the things that you'd recommend to entrepreneurs such as yourself or myself to get to the next level financially in today's market? Well, it's interesting you asked that. We just recorded a podcast this week on how to recession-proof your business. If any of you want the full approximately 45 minutes on that, please get over to Main Street Business Podcast. And my partner and I, Matt, uh, really unpack what entrepreneurs should be doing to prepare for. Maybe there's a recession, maybe there's not. But even if there's not, it's going to definitely allow you to go to the next level. I think a lot of the same things you do to prepare for a storm are going to also allow you to elevate your business and create more income because we're working on the business, not in it. I mean, whenever we can work on our business, we know it's the good, right thing to do. We're just going to all so freaking busy. So when you look at a bunch of returns, I would assume you, you probably coach multiple entrepreneurs throughout the United States and beyond. What are some of the common factors that you see with successful people that you can share with us today? You bet. I and and with that said, I'll say humbly is I've done I've I've lived the ten thousand rule. I've done over ten thousand consultations with small business owners in uh, my tax law firm, and we have an accounting firm as well. I train CPAs and enrolled agents around the country with a certification program, and. I, I speak to business owner groups and and throughout this whole experience and these consults, and we've got a team of lawyers and accountants. You don't have to meet with me. I got I tried to create a bunch of mini marks <laughs> for lack of a better, better word. But so throughout all these consults, you 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 make an important point is I've seen a lot of business owners doing it right and a lot of business owners doing it wrong. And sometimes I feel like I'm the biggest benefactor of that because I've seen these characteristics of success play out in these relationships over 20 years. So to your point, what's what's some of the key characteristics of those doing it right? From a tax and legal standpoint, we love kind of getting under the hood and fixing the engine. We've got a lot of clients that come to us that the lights go on that, oh my gosh, if I really want to go to the next level, is my legal structure right? Is everything where it's supposed to be? Are all the assets deeded? My rental properties to the LLCs? We don't worry about the due on sale clause on these mortgages. We're worried about asset protection, privacy. Banks don't care. A um, little side note there. But we really want to build a structure that allows you to expand. We call it the trifecta. And so what I'm getting at, Michael, and it's one answer to your question, even though it sounds a little random, is when a business owner is organized, they succeed more. When their legal structure is uh, effective, they're saving more taxes. You can't, and you know, to quote the infamous Kevin Costner, if you don't build it, they won't come. That's from Phil the Dreams. You got to build it. You can't put old, you know, new wine in an old bottle. It'll break. We've got, and we, the, the Yankees aren't going to show up to a field in Iowa if you don't build a dime. And so if you want to be more successful as a business owner, you got to be willing to sit down and have a, a constructive 
productive consultation with a tax lawyer or a lawyer that can speak tax or get your accountant and lawyer on the same call and say, let's plan, let's get work on my business. And we build a trifecta diagram that allows you to build for the future. That's what I've seen successful clients do over and over again is when they get organized and really get into the details. It doesn't mean you have to be a lawyer, be an accountant, but you get organized. And that's when things can really grow. That's a great point. I mean, one of the things I always talk about with my clients is I always say, hey, look, if you can't track it, you can't grow it. If you don't know what it is that you're trying to achieve, you don't have your dream detailed out, there is no way that you're going to get to that next echelon in your life. And if you can, tell us a little bit about your background, getting into the tax space and things of that nature, because I find it fascinating. I always say this, your adult report card is your tax return, right? (laughs) So that pretty much tells the story. You can't lie. I mean, you can, but that's tax fraud, but it basically tells the story of your adult financial success. Go there. Let me comment on your point. The, the, the report card uh, concept. It's interesting you say that. And I don't, I mean, maybe it's bad form to debate or disagree with your, please your, do <laughs> <laughs> your, your interviewer here. Uh, but I would, I would uh, offer a, 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 maybe a different um, report card and that would be your balance sheet. Ooh, uh, like the that. tax return is a great report card on your tax planning because I want your tax return to be uh, based on the lowest amount of taxable income and a bunch of assets and tax-free wealth over here on your balance sheet. And they work in concert. I mean, I'd say maybe there's two report cards. I mean, we all went to school. We had multiple classes. One of those report cards is how efficient am I with my tax planning? And your tax return is definitely going to tell that story. That's the blood work of of, of really what you're doing with your tax planning. But your balance sheet is really the result of all your hard work. Am I really putting away assets that are creating passive income? Do I, how big is my Roth IRA? We are adamant about building tax-free wealth and using every method possible to do that. And so uh, anyway, I just want to proffer that. I, I love that. that. I love that. No, and to jump on top of that, I would agree with you 100% because if you look at some of your most successful clients, how many of them are tracking their net worth and their balance sheets? Oh, all of them, right? Of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the visual representation of that is the quote unquote trifecta. Which, and by the way, I've said it twice now. I need to at least, for those that are listening and I don't have a whiteboard here to demonstrate it, think of the foundation of this trifecta in, in two different quadrants above it. And the foundation is your estate plan. It's your legacy. It's your trust. And are we using it for privacy properly? Is it is your trust funded? Uh, where's everything going to go if you die or get in a car accident? Are you planning in your current marriage or soon to be marriage? And and also at the bottom is your tax return. All the water flows downhill. Is it so? At the base of your trifecta is this kind of smoothie of all of your tax and wealth building and your estate plan or trust that owns everything. I don't want you to own anything. So that's the base. Okay. Then on the left side of your trifecta is your operations. Do I have a W-2? Does my spouse have a W-2? Do I have a little, just a side hustle with an LLC? Do I have a full-blown business that should more than likely be an S corporation? Has someone jacked me up with some C corp or Wyoming or Nevada crap that you don't need? Sometimes we do, but it's definitely oversold. And so many people, we clean up their mess. They have way too much legal structure. They're trying to drive a Ferrari down the road in a a residential neighborhood. doesn't make sense. (laughs) But that's the operation side, the left side of the equation. And your trust should own those entities. Your trust should own your S Corp, should own your LLCs. Then on the right side is your asset building. What's in my IRA, my 401k, my solo 401k, my health savings account. And what do I have in my Roth IRAs, my spouse, my kids' Roth IRAs? Do I have Coverdells or college savings accounts? And what do my LLCs look like with my rental properties, my hard assets, my notes, my precious metals, any stock brokers? And, the, and those LLCs and those accounts should all have the trust as the owner or beneficiary. And so that trifecta from a visual representation allows us to plan allows us to move forward and it becomes a report card or a like you're it, it manifests the future of where you're trying to go do you have any kids mark by any chance <laughs> four kids yep <laughs> okay four kids so as a father if you had to give them a piece of advice on your wealth building tools and your planning tools 
what are some of the things that you would tell them as they go into this world and try to succeed to to do some of the check marks to make, so to speak? We never got back to my history. You can come back to that and where well, I got we'll go to that, that too. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, these kids, I love this advice. I don't know if I have a, 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 a list of three or five, but let me rattle off a, a few things. One is I want all my kids funding their Roth IRA every year. And all of you as parents, grandparents, yourself, if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, I don't care when it is, you should be funding your Roth IRA. And if you have the wherewithal into a Roth 401k, and then we have what's called the mega backdoor Roth, where you could put away 70 grand this year in Roth money. People are like, what? You can do that? Yep. We got the methods. We got the procedure. This is how rich people get richer. They hire tax lawyers. So, and, and we're affordable by the way. So funding your Roth, for example, Michael, if you take a, a 15 year old employ him in your business, which you get an incredible tax write off for with no withholdings, no pseudo food, FICO workers comp, your kids aren't even going to pay taxes on the first approximate five to 10 grand, depending on what state you're in. Yeah. I take five grand a year and put it away with a 15 year old 40 years when they're 55. And we're looking at maybe a 10 to 12% return because we're going to self-direct. We're not going to be in Wall Street with a crappy 6 to 8% return. We're going to double that because we're going to invest in what we know. This is why Michael Berry just had, you know, just shorted Wall Street one point whatever billion dollars because he doesn't trust Wall Street either. And you shouldn't. If I take that five grand a year with a 15 year old in 40 years, they'll have over $5 million tax free. Five million. So with every young person, my own kids, I'm saying step one in building long term wealth is simply, it sounds so simple, but it's the little things, is funding that Roth IRA every year. And that doesn't even count future real estate we're going to own, future 401ks from employment or our own business. That's just a simple Roth IRA, five grand a year, starting at age 15. That's the power of compound interest and the multiple right. 72 rule of 72. So number two, I want every kid to have a side hustle. I told my kids, I don't care what grade you get in college. I want you to have a side business and an entrepreneurial experience by the time you graduate from college. I don't care what your grades are, no student debt and a business, period. I don't care if you graduate in three years or 10 years. I, I, the emphasis on state schools and this massive tuition and college debt and get done in four years is bull crap. It is, it's a, a story and a message. And even though you did it, parents, it doesn't mean your kids should do it. I want, I'm a, a believer in education, a higher education. I've got a master's degree and a, and a doctorate degree in law. And so I, I want my kids to go to college but we got to do it in the right way. I want kids to have a small business. I want them to learn about entrepreneurship. I want them funding their Roth. No, this is great, Mark. This is great. I think adults can take a lot of these notes to themselves as well, because a lot of us say what our kids should do, but secretly we're taking notes for ourselves that we need to implement as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we don't, we got to live what we preach. Anyway, back to that history too. I, I uh, have always been an entrepreneur. I had the little lemonade stand you know, every year and 10 other businesses between high school and graduating from college. I love Main Street America and small business. It's my passion. So when I went off to college, I went into the business program. And if anybody's been to business school or undergrad, there's four main paths. You can go marketing, finance, management, or accounting. What does everybody do when they get there? Well, I hate math. I hate accounting. I'm not a nerd. So they choose one of the other three and it's stupid. There is, I decided that I wanted to go into accounting and be a C student and be the, you know, the, the president of the class and have a great time leading all these nerds, kind of the Michael Anthony Hall of 16 candles. I just wanted to run. Yeah. I just wanted to learn accounting because the person that understands the numbers and understands the books runs the company. Boy, and, and so I went into accounting not because I love accounting, but because if you want to be good in business, you got to freaking know it. And all the, and I'm trying to let so many kids now know that there is so much opportunity in the accounting industry. What finance? Yeah. What are you going to work at enterprise next week? And give me a break finance. And, and, and then marketing, marketing is so intuitive. That is for me. I mean, I, and when you do an MBA and you do a master's program and an accounting degree, you're going to take marketing classes. You're going to take finance and management classes, but you're going to walk away with a degree where you can get a CPA an enrolled agent degree. You can be a CFO and you can be the same CFO of your own freaking company. And when you know the numbers, you're going to succeed. So embrace accounting. Accounting is not a bad thing. Math, who cares if I get a C in math? 
math. I'm going to go hire the A students, but I, I need to know the numbers. I went into accounting and then I had a professor that was a tax lawyer and I was like, boom, this guy's freaking genius. I can go to law school and be a tax lawyer and do everything an accountant does plus more. And I don't have to go to court. I can fight the IRS. Sign me up. And so I uh, went on to law school, worked for KPMG, the tax court, started a law firm 20 years ago, an accounting firm 15 years ago, and our trust company five years ago. We just kind of built this, this organization of sister of companies that just help entrepreneurs and we love it. So that's kind of where we got here. I love that. Yeah. So basically you have learned the numbers and you realized in learning the numbers, you became a success, right? That's the construct basically of the cornerstone of your business. Can you imbue the audience with the construct of how important it is to understand your own finances? Because I, I mean, I hate to say this because it sounds bad, but so many people, I don't think understand the, the, their own business and their own net worth and balance sheet. Yeah. And I think what a lot of will resonate with a lot of people is they don't even know what's on their own tax return. If we go back to that report card concept, because I hear so many people go, well, I just trust my accountant. They'll get it right. They'll, <laughs> they'll do it. And I, I, you know, it is what it is, you know, and yeah, my accountant doesn't talk to me, but what can I do? You know, there's, it, it is what it is. And that is absolutely wrong. There are so many bad accountants out there and conservative accountants that are afraid of their own shadow with a stick up their butt. You know, what do they do? They tell you, no, no, no. Can I write this off? No. Can I be happy you're paying taxes? I mean, how many people out there have heard that? Well, you're making money. You know, it's a good sign you're paying taxes because you're making money. Bull crap. I want to show a freaking zero AGI and a ton of money in my asset side tax free. That's a success. You accountants out there that might be listening to you, you think I'm crazy? Hell, I'm a CPA. I've been a CPA for 20 freaking years. I've taken every CE course. I've worked for the tax court. I've worked at KPMG. I can speak your language and you got to humble yourself and learn real street smart tax strategies. So quit listening to the old white guy in the corner office that's teaching you strategies from 1984 because there's real cutting edge strategies out there. And business owners, the reason why Michael just asked, you've got to know this because no accountant is going to care for your tax return more than you. You've got to know the strategies. I've got a, an ebook on my website, 30 ultimate tax strategy guide. Anybody can download it for free. You'll get my newsletter every week with podcasts and blog articles. You should know those. Your accountant should be meeting with you and you giving them direction to do the dirty work. You are the captain of the ship. What's going on on your ship? Do you know where you're headed? Are you writing off your kids? Are you writing off your auto? Are you writing off your travel? Do you know what a charitable remainder trust is? Are you using the intangible drilling cost tax deduction? Are you writing off short-term losses versus a self-rental versus long-term rentals? Do you know what a real estate professional is? Are you Is your spouse on payroll? Do you know how to do a reverse, a side door 401k or a backdoor Roth? If you can't, I, I teach more CPAs around the country that are starving to learn this information and business owners are sick and tired of their accountants saying no and not bringing them ideas. So you've got to take control of your tax strategies and meet with your accountant. And if they look like a deer in headlights, throw them off the damn ship and get a new first mate. I love that. I love that. So Mark, if you could leave us with a quote, something that really resonates with you of what you've learned and the crux of your entire career, what would that be and why? Oh, wow. I, I have a quote for you, but then you said my whole career and this and that. <laughs> well, something that resonates with you. Well, I just had a quote yesterday because we did a training yesterday for a, a bunch of CPAs and enrolled agents, accountants, attorneys. I train 80 to 100 uh, accountants getting certified in my program twice a week. We did time management yesterday. That was a, a, a once a month. We could just kind of work on our business, work on ourselves, work on our mindset. And time was a big one. And the quote I had yesterday, it was just really poignant, was we don't manage time. We manage ourselves within our time. Mm. So many people are like, well, time management. You don't manage time. You got the same 24 hours everybody else does. Are you managing yourself within that time frame? What are you doing with your time? And where are you spending it? Are you spending time not just the day-to-day, -day, get things done? Are you looking short-term, long-term? Are you working on yourself, your business, your education? your strategies, your wealth, or you're focusing on your passive income as well as your active income. So, Well, it's the most valuable commodity, right? I mean, on average, we have about 40 year work life. And you think about how much time if young kids start early, or even if older adults start putting their, their life together and start curating their time in a more appropriate way, the results can be astounding. Where can they follow you, Mark? Where can they get to know you better? And we should probably do this again. 
<laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you get over to uh, a great starting point is uh, markjkohler.com. At markjkohler.com, you can sign up for my newsletter, get my ultimate tax guide. You can learn about my certification program for those that, as a business owner, just want to be better educated on tax and asset protection and privacy and estate planning is 12 modules, 70 different classes and little exams. You'll come out legit telling your accountant what to do. Maybe even your lawyer and your financial advisor, you're going to be better educated than many of them. And uh, from there, you can get links to the law firm to set up a consult, get a, get a comprehensive consultation, build your trifecta, make a plan for the year it can be very, very affordable. Most of our services average around $1,500 to review your tax returns and your legal structure and get you a plan for the year. It's not like $5,000 premium package crap and unlimited LLCs and garbage. Be careful if some lawyer is trying to get you to cough up a $5,000 retainer. We don't. And we are helping clients all over the country in 50 states. And that's kqslawyers.com. The link will be there at Mark J. Kohler. We do a weekly podcast. You can get to the podcast from my page, my blog articles, sign up for the newsletter. Just educate yourself. You are your own best lawyer. You are your own best accountant. And you've got to know enough to just make sure you got the right professionals. You don't have to do all the minutia, but you got to be able to steer the ship. It doesn't take much. It's not that hard. I keep it simple. I love it. I love it. I mean, you're, you're going on so many great diatribes. We could go down so many different paths, Mark, because everything you're saying is hitting home for me. Oh, I'm a young thanks. guy. I, I'm 34. And believe me, I've learned from guys like you and, and guys that are successful and gals and trying to, you know, orchestrate my life and my business. And I'll tell you, the nuggets that you're giving are definitely helping a lot of people. So thank you for, for giving your time and your knowledge. We really appreciate oh. it. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And keep doing what you're doing and love it. Love your podcast. Love your message. And thank you for having me. And I hope to be back. Thanks, Mark. And I hope to be on yours here soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll get you over here. We'll be rocking. All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Mark. Thank Take you. Care.